In this video, I'm going to be taking photographs of my new jumping spiders and giving you some tips on how to handle jumping spiders. Hello, my name is Stuart Wood and welcome to this video. In this video, I am going to be photographing the jumping spiders that we unboxed in the last video. So you'll have to excuse me in this video, I am a bit under the weather, I have man flu. That is, it's similar to the common cold, but when it get, hits us men, it affects us a lot more than women. First of all, let's get through some uh, details of this. The first one I'm going to photograph is the male uh, P. regis. It's one from Florida. The second one is what I suspect is the female, but the little one, the very small one, I don't think we're going to be photographing because I suspect that that spider is going through a molt, and when they are molting, you don't want to touch them, okay? So, first of all... <coughs> God, I am ill. We need to set up the scene. Now I just went to my local shop and just bought some lilies. And what interested me about these is not the actual flower, but the leaves themselves. The leaves look really nice. They've got some nice leading lines that if we could get a jumping spider to sit on the end of it, it would be looking very nice. So all I gotta do is pick one that I like. I like this one. <sighs> the wife can have them after. Doubles up as a... Uh, a nice gift even though I'm doing it for a video okay so if we check uh, this leaf out now you can see you've got these lines that are very nice for leading lines what we're going to use is the macro world mug get a link in the description if you want to get your own macro world mug we're going to place the leaf on top of that like that and then we have room behind to put a background and I've opted to not put on the reflector from the uh, macro diffuser pack I've got the bonnet on I'm just going to use the one that comes with the flash. We're going to give it a go and see what that looks like. So there, I'm not looking at exposure or anything like that. All I'm looking at is the texture of the leaf, how it's positioned and that. And at the moment, I'm quite happy with that. I can't decide if I want to go with a green background or a blue background. This one is a perfect choice because it's got both blue and green on. It means all I've got to do is just reposition the background if I want to change the colour. These backgrounds are available from my website if you wish to purchase the textures and print them out yourselves. Okay, I'm going to put this onto my specimen holder. I got this from remacro.com. A lot of people keep asking about that. And we're going to take another picture. Okay, that looking okay. What I want to do is try and close this up just a little bit so that the spider can go inside it. He might feel a little bit comfortable like that. Now to do that, I'm going to need something like this. This is just a step down ring. I'm going to place the leaf inside the step down ring. And then put it back on. You can see there how I've just pushed the background down. Okay. So the leaf goes underneath the background. That should give us a nice uh, backdrop. So next we have to get the spider out. This is where it gets fun. So we have our spider here. He's yet to be named. We are going to name him in this video. And I've just got to get him out because he's decided to make his uh, home at the back of this log here. Now when it comes to uh, handling the jumping spiders, as we know from Susan, they are very docile. They just like to hang around. But Susan is used to me. She's an older spider, therefore she doesn't move around much. This one, although it's an adult, I suspect it's younger and hasn't been handled as much because he's very, um, he's very fidgety, if you know what I mean. Here he comes. And another thing that's important as well, if you can, is to not break his hammock. This is the, uh, the ribbon that they make as their home. So you want to try to not break the webbin if you can help it. Generally, if I can't get them out without breaking that webbin, which is at the side just here. Okay, you can see it's like a little sack, like a hammock. You know, you lie on the hammock. Oh, they fuck. If I can't get him out without breaking it, then generally I won't try to get him out. Now, it's sitting here in my hand. Let me bring it under here. It's quite happy. And this is the difference between a young spider and an older spider. A young one will be running all over the place, okay? Because it's because it's smaller, it's got more predators, so therefore it has to try and look out for itself. Now then, first thing you want to be aware of is with these jumping spiders. 
is their first line of defense is they will jump out of your hand. I'll see if I can get him to do that. There, do you see that? He just jumps and he just wants to go. That is something to be uh, mindful of. When you're holding your jumper, make sure you're very close to a surface just in case he jumps. Now, generally with a jumping spider, they will lay down a bungee cord. That's what I like to call it. I'm not too sure what the technical uh, term is for it, but it's a line of silk that if they do jump or fall off, then they can hang. You've seen it on spiders. They'll hang like that. You'll see his rear end go down and, and do something like that. Okay, when he does that, that means he's got a bungee cord. It'll dangle from it, okay? So that's one of their safety things. And it's one of the things you have to be aware of when you're handling your jumping spider. If you just pull away when he first gets onto you, you're going to pull him off you because he's got this little cord that's attached to his rear end. So you have to be very, um, not gentle, but slow. You've got to be patient. So when your jumper first comes onto your hand, you've got to wait and be patient. So now it is on my hand, he's quite happy sitting there. In fact, you can take a picture of it now if you want to. I'm not going to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the leaf up to the jumper and allow him to go onto it. Now, everything I'm talking about is all to do with a pet jumping spider. What I want him to do is to come around and face me. He seems very interested in watching me, which I hope is going to make it a little bit easier. But we want him just here, okay? So all I'm going to do is just I'm not touching him. I'm literally just putting my hand by him so that he wants to move away from my hand into a position that I want him. Okay, now he's roughly where I want him. You can see him, he's, he's, he's looking and that, okay? So we're going to try and get a picture of him. So for this shoot, I've opted to use a Tokina 28mm f2.8 manual lens. It is set to f16. I'm not going to be photo stacking in this video because it's something I generally don't do. So we want to get as much depth of field as possible, but at f16, we can recover the uh, the sharpness with Lightroom. I'm using my Canon EOS R, okay? That lens is adapted to the EOS R with my young Nuo YN968 EXRT. Now, I have been asked a question about this because the EOS R is not compatible with this flash. The reason I bought it was because of this little LED light here. Um, when it comes to young newer products, there's very little information on the internet. I was hoping that you could turn that LED on while you're doing macro photography. I mean, that would be brilliant because you've got a little focusing lamp. But unfortunately, when you have the LED on, the flash doesn't fire. So it's pretty much useless. Uh, it's not compatible with TTL with this camera, so I don't recommend you get this flash. But just get uh, any compatible flash for your system. And now I was asked if the TTL was compatible, would I use it? The answer is yes. When I'm using my trim macro flash on the A to D, I'm always using TTL. So let's have a look at this chappy now. See if we can get a picture of him. Again, I don't know his personality. I don't know what it's like. He's definitely not a, uh, a fidget because he's keeping still. And we all know what fidget was like. Let's get another picture of him. Very dark. It's very dark. In fact, you know what? I'm going to drop my f-stop down to... Let's go to f8. It'll help with focusing. And what I'm doing, I'm just walking backwards and forwards with the camera till his eyes come into focus. And then I shall take the picture. Flash is now set at 1 4th power. I really wish I could film the EVF on this camera so you could see you know, what, what was going on. So we've got a couple of good pictures there. I'm going to swap this, uh, this setup now. We are now going to attempt to photograph the young female jumper, okay? And as predicted, she's already legged it, okay? She's over, she's actually over here. So you can see just off the overhead just how how much faster these little guys are compared to the adults. So when you get this case here where the spider does not want to climb on you, just get the leaf, okay? Put it in front of her and she should just climb onto it. You see there? 
So you can already see a difference with the behavior from a, a young jumping spider and an older jumping spider. The old one, he has no care in the world. He just sits there, lets you do what you want to do. A young one, they're all over the place, okay? So that's why ordinarily I would now jump and use the Canon 100mm macro because I can vary the, uh, the magnification or focus using the focus ring and be able to move around and get the picture a lot easier. <coughs> However, I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm going to challenge myself to keep the reverse uh, lens on there and try and get a picture of her. And we are going to change the setup. What I'm going to do instead is hopefully I want to entice her to come onto the end of this leaf, the very point of it, and uh, get a picture of her there. So I'm just going to... In fact, I'm not going to use that at all. I am going to get our background, put it underneath like that, and bring it a bit forward. Okay. I'm going to lose the chair because I need to get much lower down to try and get this angle. And now I'm going to just try and entice her to come to the end of the leaf. Which she really doesn't want to play. She actually wants to come onto my hand. And you can't force this. This is where the patience comes in with uh, macro photography. Because the creature you're trying to photograph is not necessarily going to do what you want it to do. In fact, she's gone onto the background. Get her on there. On you go. go. Okay, she's sitting there now. Let's see if we can get a picture quickly. Oh, and she jumped. But she, she's on a bungee cord. Which I will show you that image now. You can see the bungee cord on that image, which is a, a great example of their bungee cord. And it's a safety line they put down when they're moving around. It's also a, a bane of mine when I'm editing images because the longer the shoot goes on, the more of these little cords they put down and you have to clean up in post. Okay, I want another background up in the back here, quickly. I've got to move quickly because while she's there, she's interested on jumping onto the camera, which is making for a great picture. I'm just going to keep taking pictures till I get one I'm happy with. Oh, she's back underneath. And while she's moved, I'm just going to quickly get some of these bungee cords and move them out the way. Saves editing them out later. I'll tell you what though, this jumper, she's a real pain to photograph. She's uh, not wanting to do what I want her to do. She's all over the place. And she's very fast. So although you haven't seen it, we've been going half an hour now and she still hasn't settled down, right? Because they're just so inquisitive. She wants to look everywhere. That is my two jumping spiders photographed. Again, the little one we can't photograph because it's going through a molt and uh, you just don't touch the spiders when they go through a molt. So again, just to recap, when you're handling your spider, they put down a bungee cord. So you want to make sure that you don't pull on that. You want to make sure that they're close to something they can fall onto if they're going to jump and not have a bungee cord on. You can also put down some, um, some kitchen roll or um, a towel of some sort. The bigger the spider, the more impact they will have if they do hit something solid. So a big female that's got eggs, she can burst open if you drop her. So that again, that's something you've got to be careful of. And uh, the other secret ingredient is patience uh, again to get this picture. It did take me 45 minutes, okay? And she's still running around. Um, she's just, you know, she stops, has a look around, runs around again, stops, has a look around. And it's when they stop, that's when you need to try and grab the picture if you can. Ordinarily, this is where I would bid you farewell, get the edit video edited and work on the next one. However, I already know what we're going to do for the next one. So to complete this video, I have to do a lot of B-roll. So I figured in the next video, I'm going to take you through how I record my B-roll of these jumping spiders. Believe me, a lot of people say that photography and video are very similar, which they are very similar. But when it comes to my technique of getting a video, it's completely different to my photography. I look forward for that video. That's going to be coming up next. Okay. 
But um, from me, and from, I believe, we're going to name this one Christine, because yeah, my wife's a pain in the arse, so why not name it after my wife? Makes sense, doesn't it? I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from this video. It was mostly about, you know, handling jumping spiders. I hope you took something from that. I'm just keeping an eye on her. That's why I'm looking away. But uh, from me, my name's Stuart Wood. And from Christine, we'll see you in the next video. Hello, my name's Stuart Wood. And welcome to this video. I'm going to sneeze again. <laughs>